Hello, I'm John Bowman, Medical Officer for Adventist Health here in Tillamook. Over the last two to three weeks, I've become increasingly concerned that this wonderful vaccine that's been created so miraculously is not going to be used. And the reason for that is if it isn't used, we're going to be left with this terrible social distancing, mask wearing indefinitely. We need for 70 to 80 percent of the population to get this so we can eventually get back to quotes normal. I don't know what that will look like in the future, but I know it's better than what we have right now. The vaccine is safe, it's efficient, it works, and it cannot cause disease. But in short, there isn't a provider that I know of in Tillamook County who does not want this vaccine as soon as possible. There are a few that may not be eligible based upon criteria, but those are few and far between, and I want to encourage you, along with your providers, to get the vaccine as soon as possible. Well, this is a unique brand new virus, which means nobody's had it before, nobody's immune, we're all susceptible. It's highly infectious, um, and unless we develop some sort of immunity, we're all going to get it. And that's what I would like to avoid. So herd immunity comes from the farming community and implies that a certain number of individuals, cattle if you will, have to be immune to a disease to prevent a pandemic wiping out the entire herd. So for measles, that is about 97% of the population. And as you know, about 10 to 15 years ago, we thought we had eliminated measles because 97% of the population had been vaccinated. But last year, we had an outbreak in Clark County. There were 30 or 40 cases because there's only a 70% population vaccination rate in Clark County. So we need to get to that level where there are enough people vaccinated or immune, whether it's naturally acquired from obtaining disease or from the vaccine, in order to prevent a pandemic spread. We live in a free society and I wholly support your decision to use or not use this vaccine. I just want to caution you that if more than 20 or 25 percent of us decide that that's not for us, we will not attain that herd immunity that's necessary to get rid of this virus. So when we look at the development of this vaccine, there has not been a single step shortened or avoided to accelerate the development of the vaccine. But instead of doing one step, continuing to two steps, to three steps, to four steps, to five steps, we have shortened those courses so we're doing step one and two, three, four, and five simultaneously, which has shortened the development time from years to in this case, nine months. In actuality, the research on, the, on this vaccine goes back 20 to 30 years. And people have been studied and predicting that the coronavirus itself was going to become highly infectious. So we have been looking at this for 20 to 30 years. Within 48 hours of the time that we knew that this was gonna become a pandemic, we had the entire genetic code outlined. And from that, now we have been able to take little snippets of that genetic code, encode it in a capsule, and create a vaccine that stimulates immunity to the virus. This vaccine is 95% effective. That's unheard of in terms of vaccination. So in the case of the Pfizer vaccine, there has been about 36,000 patients studied in the study. In the case of Moderna, it's about 44,000. That's a total of, excuse me, it's about 34,000. That's a total of 70,000 patients that were well studied. 
If you look at these research protocols, they ask you 500 questions. Have you had this, that? Did you scratch your nose last night? Those get checked off and they are recorded and put together at the end to see if they happen more frequently than the placebo, the sugar pill, if you will, that's given. In the case of this one, of 70,000 patients, there were no, zero serious complications. There were a few allergic type reactions. People got headache, people got fatigue, people got body aches, but there were no serious reactions in 70,000 patients. This has been used in Britain now for almost two weeks, and there are two cases of anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is a serious allergic reaction that can happen to anything. Even a cough drop can cause an anaphylactic reaction in a certain number of people. So the total, including what has now been used in the US, is only five cases of anaphylaxis, which is an unheard of number. This is an extremely safe and well-studied vaccine. Does that mean that we're not gonna find other side effects? Yeah. Some people are worried about Bell's palsy. Well, Bell's palsy occurs about 30 times for every 100,000 patients, and we're well over 200,000 patients, and there's only one or two cases of Bell's palsy. So there should be 50 or 60 just due to the current incidence of Bell's palsy. There are gonna be various things like that, but I believe that it's extremely safe, it's been well studied, and no shortcuts were taken in the development of this vaccine. So that isn't possible. The vaccine cannot give you the disease. This virus is a type of virus called messenger RNA, which is a single-stranded helix. This is only a single-stranded piece of genetic material, not a double-stranded. It cannot penetrate the nucleus where the DNA resides, so it does not manipulate the DNA. It simply goes into the cytoplasm, the outside of the nucleus, forces the ribosomes to make the spike proteins that are attached to the COVID virus. The body then identifies those spike proteins as foreign and creates antibodies. The antibodies attach to the spike protein, take them into killer cells, and destroy the virus and the protein. So that's the mechanism of how it works. This messenger RNA is only a tiny little snippet of the thousands and thousands of DNA genetic material complex. So we're only taking a tiny little bit of it that cannot replicate the virus. We're coating it with a lipid, a fat if you will. That's put into the injection, it's taken up by the cell, and then the cell manufactures the spike proteins that we find on the COVID virus. So it's not possible to get the disease from this vaccine. So I listened to a lecture by a Vanderbilt University um, professor, Dr. Hennison, here recently. Uh, Aaron Oldenkamp turned me on to it. He's been working with the coronavirus for 23 years. He worked with Moderna and Pfizer in the development of this, vi of this uh, vaccine. He stated that this is the cleanest vaccine with the least amount of foreign substances in it of any vaccine developed to date. Um, it is so pure that we have to use it within six hours because we're worried that it may become contaminated just by simple exposure to the air. So the dilutant is very pure and there is no possible way to stick some tracking substance or other thing that could be used nefariously against us. Um, everyone's concerned about how much liberty we give away and how much we want to keep for ourselves. But in this case, I am not concerned that the government is going to be able to use this in any way to track me or follow me. We all carry around cell phones. We have all sorts of electronic devices that are certainly a lot easier to track than some little microscopic particle that's going to be injected into your body.
You know, we live in a free society, and I said that earlier. We can all make our choices. And I believe a religion and the religious principles are a fundamental right. My only question is, how many are going to have religious objections? And if that number exceeds 25% of the population, then all of the injections, all this research, can be thought of as perhaps being less than useful. I want to get rid of all of this social distancing and the masks, etc. And I respect somebody's religious opinion, but I wish that they would thank those that do get the vaccine if this pandemic ever disappears. I believe that someone has to go first and someone has to go last. <laughs> I think there's plenty of time for us to fall in line where we feel comfortable. Initially, the vaccine has actually arrived here in Tillamook County. Uh, the hospital has 400 doses and following CDC guidelines, those will be given to frontline healthcare workers to diminish the risk of them contracting the disease or passing it along to their patients. This will be rolled out over the next six to nine months to where there's enough vaccine for everybody that wants it to get it. So it's okay to wait a little bit, but I believe based on what I've seen and the experience that people have had in the last two weeks getting the vaccine, that this is gonna be uniquely safe and efficacious. And I look forward to getting mine as soon as possible. I want to thank you for listening to what I had to say and seriously considering the use of this vaccine. I think it can make a difference and I think it can get us back to normal, get us away from using all these things that are so distracting and so non-personal. Let's get back to life that's normal.